I well, understand. Well, I mean, you get if you get injured, Moth, you're probably I'm dead. dead. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm talking about the Space Marines, the ones that are, <laughs> the ones that are taking the brunt of the damage. Like, dude, almost got eviscerated by that tank. That would have been. I think it would have been game over for your character, right? Oh yeah. There was no way I was able to recover that. And that's, that's like, your new character, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Yeah, 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 yeah. Kaboom! And then a carbon copy of your character, uh, hello, strange brother, <laughs> comes on the battlefield. <laughs> I am clone three. I mean, I don't know what you're talking about. I am third brother. I'll avenge your death. Ah. Oh, so he's a Marine from the uh, Krieg. That would be oh. a great Space Marine chapter. A Krieg chapter. Yeah. Oh, I forgot to mention. Uh, so you guys dealt with all. You dispatched all the orcs, right? But there's also uh, the goblins and Gretchens in the bunkers of themselves. Thousands of them, obviously. Uh, are you guys trying to kill everything and prevent them from escaping to, to spread the word you guys are there, or this? I thought I thought we already did that yet. Uh, last you month. You dispatched of the orcs. The the Gretchens. Because I, because Moth brought up a good point. Like, wait a minute, there's all those Gretchens in those bunkers. So there's thousands of them. I didn't bring up any point. He was talking to himself, and I just said, "We'll kill them all." Okay. And that was about it. You're gonna spend the you're gonna spend, you're gonna spend the day killing them all. Gotcha. And I think, I think his I think the... his point was we didn't have enough ammo to do it, and I was like, "Guy, every one of us has a melee weapon." Yeah, I suppose. And yeah, probably stomp and torch things and cut off their advance. So, but I'm just saying you're going to spend the day doing that, right? Just make it a day of it. Why not? Copor needs repairs anyway. Well, that's true. Yeah, so that that's perfect. So, when you guys are ready to start, let, let me know. We'll, we'll go we'll start from there. You guys are spending the day. It will be day 2 of this of this uh little incursion of yours. So, I'm going to roll some GM rolls and see if anything slipped through your killings. You've killed everything. So, anyways. That figured it'd be a very low percentage of anything escaping you guys. Because those things are not known to be Super stealthy or fast. They're in uh, oh gosh, what's that word? They're goblins. Stupidus. Yeah. So it'd be like hurting a bunch of cats and killing them. That's mm. that'd be your entire day. Hurting cats and killing them. Ah. And they have they have zero interest in engaging with you. The ones that do manage to quote unquote get away. Some But yeah, all the ones that matter are dead. Dan, you back? I'll be yeah. back. Are you okay? I need to go back there. Ten four. Well, when everyone's ready, I will share the note. Don't mind me, I'm just slamming breakfast at the moment. And you're saying all these Thunderhawks that you're going to be getting, that you're going to get three of them, they're going to be sticking with you guys for the remainder of the campaign. Use them as you, as you need to. Interesting. And you, call, and you can call them in, like Dan, Dan and I were talking about, you can call them in now or at a more convenient time. You can call... 
one at a time or once, but there's a window of opportunity. You get a few days of them, uh, the the window for it. I was thinking. In fact, I'll roll for that. How many days you guys will have before the orcs seal off your ship's capability of launching those operations? Ah, roll to seven. You guys get, uh, get a whole week. Judging from all of these, I think the number eight uh, is like since the Dreadnought is damaged and Dominego is almost dead as well. Yeah, yeah don't say anything. Supplies. Yeah, don't say anything. Yeah, I want the other players to. I want you all to mm. discuss this. I believe we're still waiting on dude to get back. Yeah, but you guys have a basically a week time frame to then call this support. And then once that support starts to come, you have a small window, and then they have to bounce. You get like one call. You get a chance to call this these forces one time because the ship will come in because it's a stealth craft that Moth has. So it'll come in, do its stealthy thing, drop off these needed supplies, bounce out. So you can call it immediately or a week from now. If that makes sense. Yeah, makes sense. All right, I'm back. Welcome back. Hi, back. Okay, I'm ready. Who are we waiting on? I think it was me. Yeah, I think we're all here, aren't we? Moth, heel mug. I'm here. I'm here. Yeah. All, all right. right. So this is the communication the ground team will is going to receive. Oh, I can just I can just talk it. Say it myself. Uh, Kill team, this is Captain Marthas of the Dawn Wraith. I must report an unexpected and concerning development. While conducting sweep of the sector, our scanners picked up a significant orc activity converging on a derelict vessel. Upon closer inspection, I recognize the wreckage as none other than the Death Watch War Barge Eternal Vigilance. That's the old war barge you guys had before. Uh, I recall your previous mention of this vessel, a once glorious bastion of your, of your chapter. He's referencing to you, Dreadnought. Now, a graveyard destroyed by the Void Entity. The orcs are swarming over it, as if drawn by some residual, residual power present of this warp barge I deem necessary to inform you immediately. We have a brief window before the orcs fully commit to their efforts, which may involve looting, defiling, or worse. The, the Dawnwraith is prepared to deploy supplies, reinforcements, or extraction teams as required. I remind you that time is a luxury we do not have. The orcs are numerous and relentless. I know your current operational status. Is there anything within the Dawn Wraith that requires your immediate retreat or 
at your location that requires your immediate retrieval or destruction to prevent from falling or cans? Or do you require reinforcements to push through the green tide to secure the site? Or to push to the main base? Your orders are carried with utmost urgency. Don Wraith awaits your command. What is your directive, kill team? Sorry, you were cutting out. I think I missed half of that. Give me that in writing. Uh, yes, I'll get it in, do it in writing. I shall do it in writing. Though I meant I should have edited the part where it's, he's talking. It's talking about the ship. It's, it's actually referring to your location. So negate that part. And I'm going to share with you now the journal. So if you look now, there is a journal in your item list on mission six, window of opportunity. So you guys can discuss what payload do you guys want for reinforcements? You guys have a seven, seven, seven day period, which you can call this down anytime you want. And then it's the only chance you get to call it down. And then the Dawn Wraith has to bounce out because of the orc fleet presence. Brothers, my dreadnought is in dire need of repairs. Well, you were repairing it while we were clearing the bunkers, right? Uh, I was I? I don't think I don't can. Think you don't have the means. I don't think you yeah. have the means. There's something in your sheet that says you can. Ugh. I don't think so. Considering only one of us in this entire kill team has ever been, two of us on this kill team has ever been in that ship and know what it has the captain i mean you would have formed your captain he he knows of it he doesn't know anything about it i know and okay. only three characters left in this game session know anything about that ship or what was on the ship yeah you'd be one of them nope i wouldn't but Zeal would be, and she's on board the, uh, the Donrath. Wasn't wasn't Dominango also part of it? No, your your character wasn't was uh, involved, definitely involved. You're involved in the destruction of the entity. Yeah, I, I wouldn't know anything else about the ship. I arrived and the ship was already taken over. Right. I wouldn't know anything about so, what's on it or what's in it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know of the entity and the, the entity and... though was on a different. Yes, yes. Ship. I said what's yes, yes, on yes, or yes. in the ship. Yeah, 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 I get that. That makes sense. By the way, uh... Dude is no longer playing as Dominego, even though he's playing as a character whose uh, first name starts with D and uh, last name starts with C, and he's using the same portrait, which is mildly confusing. I see, I see. Nah. Yeah, no, his other Dominagus is, uh, he's doing training missions elsewhere. Or he's on another kill team, right? I don't know, what, what, what did you do to your old character, dude? I don't remember. Let's just say he's on another <laughs> kill just, team. Let's just say he's uh, in another kill team or missing in action. Your princess so is like in another years. castle. <laughs> right, so, yeah, this is the Don Wraith speaking to you guys, and then, uh, Dan, you're preparing uh, the next steps for the operation on the, on the ground. So you mean communication with your team. So go ahead and discuss what, what option you guys want to go with. So I guess I communicate to the team that uh, there are multiple options available. and. Uh, depending on your needs, whether it's a support or an assault, uh, uh, if it's support you need, then option eight uh, would be the most suitable. Yeah, you guys should all have the same thing as well, so you guys can look through the list. Oh, there's a there's a list. There's a list. Yeah, well, I told yes, you. Yes, it's the windows of opportunity. Oh, okay. uh -huh. yeah. under mission six. Yep. That's your guys' option packages. So, but Dan's... You guys are conversing with Dan and whatnot. He's going to prep it for you guys. Okay. 
and he's gonna his character is gonna be arriving on one of those Thunderhawks, so he gets to choose which one. What he which one he's gonna sit in. All right. Centurions. I thought we were playing in the uh, time before Primus Marines. Where does it have that? Which which option? Uh, number eight, Centurion Devastators. Aren't those Primus? I think we were like in the forty second millennium, right? I don't remember. Well, we'll just say. Well, you do you do have that technology from that that tech you got? So we'll just say they crafted something for you guys. Here you go. Sure. That's what happened to uh, Angry Space Marine, dude. They, they, he went crazy. He went nuts. He died. And then they researched the hell of the technology. And there you go. Or, Tess, did, he didn't express interest coming back, did he? Oh, uh, no. Okay, so then we'll say his character is super dead. Went crazy, killed himself. <laughs> That's literally what happened. He literally went angry and killed himself. So that's Damn. what his character, his character just went insane. Couldn't get out. Oh yeah, couldn't get out of the suit. Yeah. Yep, had a panic attack, went crazy, ripped his head off. We, uh, we didn't figure out if uh, it's possible to recover the suit, did we? Hmm. Oh, that's what the Centurions are. We're trying to justify their existence. They, the, the tech priest took it and researched and made variations of it. Ah, okay. Got it. That's what I was, that's what I was alluding to, because Yelmug asked about that. No, no, no. You have advanced technology from the future, so they made this stuff in preparation for all this. And you have access to it. So you'd have the best of the best technology. There you go. Now we're all good to go, right? Yeah. Still reading through the options. So are these going to assist us on the planet, or yes, what? Because some of these good. options are definitely not the planet. Yep. Uh, yeah, I saw that. That's just what that's what the payloads are available to you. So that's why I threw in some stuff that would make sense, that would make sense, because I want you guys to, what's the word, think for yourselves. Make a decision what you want. I'm about to create a poll. Give me one second. And is there a note on this or anything? Say that one more time. Is there a note like where we can see all the different options? Yeah, yeah. it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's windows of opportunity. So if you go over your ah, characters, okay. Right? Up at the top under mission six, it's the yeah, I, opportunity. I got it. All right, does everyone know? No. <laughs> All right, I put the yep. result. I, yeah, I put a vote result in Death Watch thing, so you guys can just make your vote and just keep it fair and whatnot. The Tech Meet Marine with Servitors. That would help out repairing the Dreadnought, right? Yep.
All right. I voted. Okay, get what? Three more votes. Uh, it's between one and two. And then in the event there's a tie, uh, we'll just say you can mix and match from those assortments. And you guys make the decision based on the whatever you think is best. So it's not a only that. Does that make sense? Uh, who else has the vote? Me. Okay. Okay, got four. Got one more. Or one, yeah, one, two, three, four, and five. So. Well, at least it's odd. So there's no way to be. To, there's not really a chance to make it even vote. I mean, I, I mean, could, well, we all vote there, for there is, there is. The last person could vote for something else. <laughs> I can be the tiebreaker, and I and I'll roll dice to be the tiebreaker. All right. That's surprising that we even had same votes. <laughs> Surprised anybody vote for option eight? There's a bunch of useless shit there. So it sounds like option eight. Maybe do we want to discuss this then? Yeah, you guys can discuss it between your options. Okay, option eight has portable void shields and fortification supplies. We don't need those. They're useless. Well, they have Centurion Devastators, which are very mobile. They have a tech marine with servitors to repair the person. So does option uh, one. Right, right. I mean, what? void shields are, would be pretty great versus that acid ship that they keep throwing at us. We destroyed their siege! That one camp. So which... which uh, we destroyed yeah. one camp. We haven't even gotten to the fortress. They probably have more of that shit there. All right, I'll probably change my vote to option one then, because I didn't uh, realize that there's also tech marine on that. There is also mm -hmm. in option eight. There is an apothecary supplies right. to heal up any of the wounded right. marines. True, which true. The option one does not have. But uh, option one has another dreadnought. All right, I send it back. It's uh, double dreadnoughts. There are air support <laughs> drones. Which and a full devastator squad. Bomb. Yep. You and a whirlwind that. missile battery. <laughs> Which I'm gonna be honest with you. It's gonna help out. <laughs> I mean, it's up to you. Do you want to like be more offensive or more supportive? It's like if we want to be even more offensive, we go option two. Wait, wait a minute. Or go any sort of aid or any sort of passive bonuses. We get weapons. We get people. We get nukes. We get fucking five Terminator squad that can teleport in at a moment's notice and to teleport out if we need it. I'm changing my vote to option one. Well, I can't change it now. Oh, you now I can. To... Yeah. Yeah, 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 I, yeah. I, I said back to vote. Oh, and a Psyker in option two. All right, anyone else want to change their vote? No. Nah. Also, what the I just, hell? I just think void shields are a waste on an orc planet. I mean... Damn. Well, the question is, will it help out against the acid attack? Okay. It's a void shield. I imagine it would. Okay. <clears throat> question of these of these two options, what vessels would you swap for one of, or one of the other? Because it's not like you're fixed to just these three vessels. What's there? You could. Oh, okay. We could mix and match the vessels. The two votes from the two votes. Yeah, I just want to gotcha. see what you guys wanted first. What options we had available, and if it was a decent number and not spread out across five. Like two options, you guys can mix and match what you want here now between the two. Though Is it, it has, fixed on yeah, fixed on numbers one, two, and three. Okay, got it. So it's you, the on the first. So the option one would have won. So Thunderbook one and two are solid. You can't change those. And then the third option, you can change that if you need to. Uh, worldwide support. Mm -hmm. You can change that one out. Whirlwind support would be nice for assaulting yeah. a uh, fortress. 
Another reason for taking that one is also <coughs> Thunderhawk 3's heavy supply crates. We get turrets, we get extra armor plating, and minefields if we want them. Also, what the hell is a tarantula turret? Is it a turret that's shaped like a tarantula, or does it shoot tarantulas? <laughs> or, is it, or is it a mobile turret? It's a mobile turret. It's, Sounds it's like not a mobile turret. <laughs> yeah, it's a siege equipment. It's probably not mobile, but... Oh, no, no, the that's... tarantula turrets are just... Uh, Mobile the fact that you drop them at a location, and then they oh, stay Oh, yeah, yeah, those things. Okay, yeah, I know what you're talking about. But they don't actually move. They're not really, they don't really look like a, a spider. They've got four legs to stabilize it yeah. into the ground. But I'm sending, I'm it. sending pictures it's, of this. It's essentially just uh, a, a dual drop. heavy bolter. Yep, drop in place. Uh, it looks like there's a missile variant, too. Ooh. Yeah. Anyways, I sent pictures to Death Watch of what it so looks is like. That the only, that was, is that the only slot on the Thunderhawk 2? It's just the whirlwind support and the supply crates? Thunderhawk 3. Okay, so you can swap out the supply crates for something else if you, want, if you want to keep the whirlwind battery. You can swap the slots out. I mean, the main thing was the heavy armor plating. In case Kovar gets damaged again, we can weld even more armor back onto him. Yeah, applique armor. Yeah, so it's up to you guys. What you, if you guys want to swap out the th the third Thunderhawk or not? With only other Thunderhawk threes or any Thunderhawk? Any any Thunderhawk from that list, the other list. If that makes sense. From the the other list was option eight, I believe, right? Yeah. Or you could swap out, or you could swap out just one item from the list on the Thunderhawk from that list that they have. So you can swap out the heavy. The heavy. Uh, we swap out the the I mean, uh, it's just turrets supplies. and armor supplies and grab the apothecary stuff. Or we can swap out the ammo resupply. Yeah, there you go. We don't really need that. Yeah. Swap it for either air support or maybe the void shield. I might or the apothecary be supplies even. Because you guys were saying. You're wounded and you need help. Isn't that well, what uh, Bazora is for? <clears throat> Sorry, what was that? <clears throat> Isn't that what uh, the uh, apothecary is for? Is there an apothecary in Dropship One? There, you there can bring not. you can bring uh, Mossel's apothecary on board. Yeah, Bazora. Oh, no, Sylvester. Sylvestra. Sylvestra, she's on the she ship. Has, uh, she has not leveled in a long time, though. Yeah. I think she's, like, level four? Yeah. She's on the ship, helping. Well, there you go. I, I like I like the idea of uh, having Whirlwind. Because we are going to be assaulting uh, multiple fortified orc positions, and that will soften them up considerably. I mean, the only thing that's really good to swap is going to be the ammo res ammunition res resupply. Yeah, we don't really need that. Yeah, let me make another handout for you guys' selection. <clears throat> the question is, what should we swap? Uh, swap the ammunition resupply with any of the option 8's items. I don't think Sounds we like can... There's... I don't think we can swap the ammunition. You can. Without, not without swapping the venerable dreadnought. No, Booker said you can. Ah, okay. Yeah, you can. Then I you swap can. individual bits. You can swap individual bits on the ships between the other list. I'm surprised we had a second dreadnought. I mean, we, we can go crazy and get Centennial Devastator Squad. <laughs> And then I created another uh, sheet loadout for you guys, so you guys can uh, go ahead and paste your final loadout. Is that called Thunderhawk loadout? Yep, Thunderhawk loadout. It's empty for me? Yep. That's for you guys to copy-paste wherever you want over there. You can edit it. If you, if you look at it, you can actually edit it. Is it... Can you... What happened... Well, how does it handle conflict edits? I have no clue. 
So okay, that, we'll figure could, it out. You can literally there. have you can literally have a point man that just goes boop and puts it. So whoever you want to use your point man for the actually it's Dan. Dan's in charge of the loadout. There you go. So Dan will do it. Wait, uh, I do what? You're in charge of the loadout because you're actually loading the ship itself. So go to the go to the handout, the, the Thunderdog loadout. You'll be co okay. copy pasting what you guys agree to. There you All go. Right. That, that'd be your that'd be you loading the the transports. All right, so Thunderhawk 1 is Venerable Dreadnought. Uh... And already we don't know what to take because we're not taking the ammo. Well, we don't know what to replace it with. We haven't talked about that. We talked about options, but we don't know what we want as a team. All right, then we're going to skip that one Thunderhawk to Devastator Squad. You got it. Uh, and Tech Marine. Thunderhawk 3, whirlwind support. Uh, do we take the heavy supply crates? Yes. All right. All right, good. Oh, God. Should we switch okay. it out for a librarian? Somebody who's super psychic and can deal with psychic orcs? We can only choose between be 1 and 8. Uh, we chose between 1 and 8. And yeah, that's it. Whoever's in 1 and 8, you guys can choose from. Alrighty then. Otherwise, what's Updated. the point of the voting system, right? Devastator Squad or Air Support Drones? I mean... Firepower is always good. Uh, aerial drones are just free scouting, which is going to be pretty good since we're in an unknown territory. That could also help us scout the the fortress. Yep. Or the for port tris <laughs> for perp tris. <laughs> <laughs> the perp tris. The perp tris. Yeah, you're gonna go for the dam now. Well, I'm just saying, with the air support, we can actually scout that out and see uh, what's like what it's like there. See if we can do any exploits against the fortress or fortress capital. If it's if it's powering the capital, then we could probably destroy the dam. Actually, if we have if we have air support drones and whirlwind, we can right. Then we can call down airstrike. Yeah, we can pretty accurately mark uh, what we're hitting. So we're becoming Ukrainians. <laughs> Whatever <Sure>. works. <laughs> I mean, orc siege tactics are pretty Russian. <laughs> uh, what, they charge WAG and then they uh, just. They charge, run they out. all die. They go, oh shit, charge again, and they charge some more. <laughs> Oh man, oh, they're yeah, still doing that's those. That's just tactics. Russian war strategy. That's always been their war strategy, even from World War Two. It's it's a little bit more nuanced than that, but uh, no, they're still doing it. Ironically, no, it's just that the rushes are more nuanced. I tell you, they're more nuanced. <laughs> It's not just about getting them, it's about having the proper numbers first. Alright, okay, question. Do we want to save our Space Marine, or can he take it? For the remainder of the mission. Because do we take the apothecary supplies, or do we take the drones? Yeah, I mean, you can take both, you can just get on the vessel. I mean... We need to replace the ammunition res resupply. Uh, in the first Thunderhawk, and we only have space for one. Uh, so it's either air support drones, or officer supplies, or something else. I don't know, more of firepower. I don't know, Centurions, whatever. Funny. But yeah. The, yeah. And these Thunderhawks will be with you for the remainder of the this mission, because they can't return back. Yeah, I guess it's a question for dude. Like, should... Do you want to heal, or do you think you can just survive long enough? I'm, I'm not hit. I'm not hit. 
Oh, wait, who got hit? Cobbler. Oh, Cobbler. Wait, no, but like, wasn't there like a space marine that got hit? Yeah, dude got hit. He just didn't die. He just took my. Oh, I avoided. I have. I avoided most of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You took minor damage. If that, I think, or I don't recall. Or I don't minor think I damage. Took your damage. armor. It's armor damage. Oh no, you avoid that too. You avoided that too. That's right. Yeah, I, I'm not hit. I'm not, and I still have full oh. armor. Oh, in that case, we can just take the air support drones. Yeah, sure. Yeah. He was going to get hit by a cannon, which would have killed him. So we're yeah. getting air support plus whirlwind, is that it? I think that'll be uh, good, though. Plus a dreadnought, yep. Alright. Alright, so this is going to be the list. Uh, does everyone agree with that? Uh, uh yep. Thunderhawk loadout. Mission 6, Thunderhawk, load out. Looks good to me. Alright, then uh, yeah. I'm gonna be in the second Thunderhawk and this can be called down whenever you want to. Maybe supply crates. The only useful thing will be two things would be the tarantulas and the uh, Armor plating, but not the minefields. We could put the minefield around the wind, uh, around the uh, whirlwind battery, so it can't, so people can't charge it down and blow it up. Yeah, it's and, that, and that extra armor plating, uh, I'll allow you to repair your armor there, Tess. Yeah. You just have to spend the day doing that. Yep. And having the tech marines do that, so they can get you back up to snuff. All right. All these battlefield patches. And will the Thunderhawk also carry offensive capabilities once it's loaded up? These are these are going to be transport variants, so no. I, th I think on the list, the loadout, there was an assault variant of the Thunderhawks. Let me look. Uh, what is up to? They actually had an air, air variant, gunship one. Did they not? I must not include that one. But no, most of these don't have weapons. They're literally packed it... to the brim with supplies. So <clears throat> They traded wep offensive for supplies. Well, at least we can reutilize them to uh, transport things around. They can be with the uh, World War I support <clears throat> for defense. Yep, because I imagine then you'd bring you'd load up these three Thunderhawks with everything oh. to the brim. So yeah. Now it is up to the rest of the King team to summon them whenever they want. Alright. So when are you guys summoning these the uh Hey, what are you telling this captain? Oh, that's a good question. My first thought is to have him get um, the apothecary up on the bridge to tell him what's on that ship. She would probably have a map. Okay. Well, she goes up there and gives the intel. Well, she informs him where to find the intel on the actual Dawn Wraith, this ship itself, because she uploads obviously all her records to any ship she's aboard. So the captain's informed what he's what he's dealing with per se. And then he's giving you just uh, intel on what's going on. There seems to be orc fleets assembling. They're going to and fro from that orc spaceport <laughs> to this thing. It seems that they're bringing supplies and other things to and fro. So they're up to something. They might be trying to reactivate it then. Okay. Uh, 
So you guys spend the first day. I mean, if if they're trying to reactivate it, then is it okay to blow it up? Didn't we blow it up? Well, no, no, we partially blew it up. Yeah. I think we left it in a state that was potentially salvageable in the future. And now uh, it's being yeah, salvaged yeah. by orcs in the future. Did you fight yeah. this thing? I could have sworn it the, that this one was killed by the entity. Like, he blew it up himself, and you guys fought another vessel. Yes. No, I think because we I, placed we the did, as well. We did uh, scout it, or we did something with it, and oh, that's right, yeah, you that it was potentially salvageable later. Yes, that's what you guys did. You guys went aboard, and you guys tried to find the entity on the vessel. It was not there; it was a shadow of the entity, whereas the main entity already taken off with you guys' other ship. And then you guys waited for help, I think, right? If I recall. Yeah, something like that. That's where we introduce your character that you have now. Okay, uh, so where are you guys going from here? You guys just defeated the orc encampment. There's no more artillery bothering you guys. Uh, I'm going to do some rolls as well to see what kind of orc patrols are you guys are dealing with now. I mean, they're orcs. We could probably just paint something green, talk in a slight British accent, and they'll never know. <laughs> so go ahead and do uh, awareness checks. Does everyone? Because imagine you're spending the day... I'm my character sheet. Yeah, I'm imagining you guys are spending the day after you kill the Gretchens. You guys are setting up a base camp and plotting what to do next after receiving the intel. Okay, so... So you guys see it. So there seems to be those those Gretchens. There seems to be other Gretchen patrols coming from elsewhere. And they're unaware of your presence. So it's a you guys see about a squad of maybe twelve Gretchens. They have binoculars and they have sticks. Some of them have rocks in their heads. Do we know what color the rocks are on their heads? These are blue. Okay. Oh no, we've never seen blue rocks. It could be anything. Yeah. <laughs> Second. It allows them to swim better. They're they're using the river for patrols. <laughs> that would be funny. Hold up, and then no, give some blue balls. One second. Boop boop. Uh-oh. Where is it? No, not that. There it is. You guys hear that over your comms somehow. You see one of the Gretchens talking on it. Quick, somebody fake an orc accent. <clears throat> no, this ain't the space, boys. You got the wrong frequency, it's the orcs. Okay, and in the background... In the background of him talking to you, he's talking about 
<laughs> that uh, Hume, Hume spies lie to us. Oh. And you're rolling for, you're trying to see this guy, right? See the Gretchens? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that be what? What is that? Probably awareness, right? No, 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 no. There's actually deceive. deceive. Oh, deceive. Hope you got good fellowship. Uh oh. <laughs> I, think, well, that's I think your role. robot that's voice might need to get away. <laughs> yeah, you gotta roll your roll. <laughs> oh, so it's an opposed roll. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Modifier? Uh, plus ten. Alright. Oh, I did roll higher. Don't you have to make a check to see if you even can make it? Uh... You actually made the oh, same right. roll. You're right. Because weight of years isn't just intelligence, it's also fellowship. Yes. Yep. <laughs> Uh, yeah. I think that's a fail. Uh, it's no, fail. Okay. no, it's equal or no? under. Equal yeah, or it's under. under. Yeah, equal or under. You made it. Because you rolled a six last time and failed. Oh. All right, so you. Oh, it's to my them. fellowship bonus. That's right. Yeah, they. they so yeah. they, they believe you, but you do hear that in the background that human that the humies humi spies lie to us. And then you hear again immediately after. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, someone else should uh, do it this time. Anyone's going to respond to this? You guys all hear this on your radio comms. They somehow hacked, either hacked or you don't know how, but they're on your radio squad comms. Your squad boxes. This is coming through your guys' helmets. Moth, you wouldn't be on their squad box. Oh, you would be on their squad box, right? Probably, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so you'd hear it too. I don't know, I think my voice just might give it away immediately. Why, there are no female orcs? Not that I'm aware of. Imagine if there was a Sisters of Battle equivalent for orcs. Or the Adeptus Sororitas. Is anybody else good at Fellowship? Nope. I'm also not trained in Deceive, either. Yeah, neither am I. But I'm pretty decent at Fellowship, I guess. What? Space Boys? Where are you at so we can kill you? <laughs> Forgot we have Thunk. Yeah, you space boy's gonna get it. Yeah. I'm a great crump ya. Yeah, I'll try to talk to you. You gets. Oi! Oi, space boys! Yeah! You there, space boys? The human spy sent us. You know them. Oi! Come in! What part of anything that I said indicated that we were space boys? Oi! <laughs> Hello! Space boys!
And that's all you just keep hearing hear him say that over and over again. Neil shifts in his suit uncomfortably. Oh, hey, he responded. <laughs> this was probably a distraction, trying to locate us. So what are you going to do with this uh, information? Thunk's going to say, Thunk hate bad man peoples. Thunk <laughs> going to go find human spy and do as orc do and crump him. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, that's my way of saying uh, I got to dip out and uh, go lay down and not die. Are you guys, you're, you're, you guys going to go take a poo? No, no, he's going to go and take care of the, the human space. He's just going to go and look for him. All right, he's going to go do that. Yeah. <laughs> Rest easy, man. Yeah, yeah, thank you. See y'all later. See ya. See ya. All right, uh, ya. so what are you guys, guys going to do as these aggressions berate you with, uh, over the comms? Well, we know where they are at. Yeah, Thanks you're looking at him. Yeah, yeah, you're looking right at him. <clears throat> It must be that blue rock trying to communicate with us. Yeah, they, you just don't, they, they don't see you. They're just like sitting there. You see them with their sniper rifles. They're kind of gleaming in every direction. And they're like, Oi, Spacey Boys, where you at? Where's the Spacey Boys? Yeah, the humans. The humans by sent us. You know. Time to kill the Space Boys. How far away are they? Maybe 50 Wait. yards from your location. Ooh. You guys are so fairly close. But I mean, you're up on a yeah. hill. My my squad get, uh, gets into position and aims at the uh, Gretchen's. Same. Now, if you guys do recall at the beginning of this mission, just not not saying anything, but the the humans did say they had spies on the inside, so you're aware full contact before you. Make decisions. Permit decisions. Hmm. Could be a trap, could not be a trap. You don't know. So, what do you guys do with these Gretchens? You guys gonna just glare at them, stare at them for a little bit? I get ready to aim. I get ready to aim at them. Alright. My, my squad. Uh, Rookatiel gets into position. Which one of these do you want me to take out? We should all pick a target. They can they can hear that. Can they? They're on your squad. They're Man. in the squad. <coughs> communications. Oh yeah. yeah. <coughs> Are we close Use enough to where I can? Oh yeah. Just use visual and hand signals, guys. Yeah. You're right. Uh. Yeah. So you guys, you you guys can obviously use hand signals. So you guys are using hand signals to move in position and whatnot. My squad is. Okay. Then you hear one in the background. Here, give me that rock. And he takes that blue rock off that guy's head, puts on his head. And he goes, "Oi, squad boys, spicy boys, respond!" Oi. Respond! <laughs> That's all you hear. And you see this unfold that he has a blue rock on his head, and then he takes that box, that communication box from the other one, and is talking to you guys now. And he slurs insults and calls your mother stupid and all those other stuff. And, uh, low gothic. <laughs> Oi! <laughs> is your mother always a trotter? <laughs> Stupid spacey boys, you bunch of cowards. How many do we see? Twelve of them. Twelve, alright, damn. Right, and then let me let me do an intelligence check, because I'm about to make a decision here. Hey, uh, the other one's like, Oi, we're trying to, trying to scan these spacey boys. Get off the comms. Quit yelling at them, is what you hear in the background. I can trap them. So, and that right there should be. Now we fire. 
<laughs> yep. Okay. So I'm just gonna assume you kill all of them. They have no HP, so you eviscerate the entire squad. Well, are we gonna <laughs> roll to hit and see if yeah, we can roll, hit him? Yeah, roll to hit. Roll to hit. I mean, they're within 50 meters, right? Yeah, they're pretty close. Let's see here. They have. Oh, no we don't armor. even. We don't even need snipe rifles if they have no armor. Yeah, you get a you get a bonus plus plus twenty. I mean, I could take them out with my rifles. It's what plus twenty? Yeah, plus twenty. Yeah, they're dead. They're mega dead. All Damn. dead. Because because dude by himself killed six. You killed. You can kill what one? Or does he? Does he have rapid fire? He killed two. Oh right! I should have bonuses. So let's see. Okay, so. It's safe to assume that they didn't even see it coming. You just eviscerate, the, you saturate the area where they're at, and they drop dead. Yeah, with my squad in low, only two people fired at, uh, with my squad and killed most of them. <laughs> Seven, full plus four. So 11, 11 were dead based on my shots. Or my squads. So if you guys want to save that intel somewhere, let me make a note for you guys. You can save intel because it's hard to remember half the time. Yeah. Uh, and this will just be for you guys to keep intel on on notes that are important to you guys. So there you go. And I'll put that in mission six, or I'll you know, I'll change this to groups. There you go. Your groups and tell notes. So you can make a note of that blue rock on their head and what it does. Because I'm pretty sure you figured out what it does, right? I mean, yeah. yeah. It's, uh... Well, it intercepts the uh, uh, intercepts comms. It may also Talk have rock. it may also have another effect that we're not aware of yet. But that's the one we know of. Yep. Are you inspecting the bodies at all? Or are you guys just like uh, leaving them to die in the dust? No, we'll inspect I the mean, bodies. I mean, I got 16 total bolter shots hitting them. So, <laughs> whatever is <laughs> left is probably just twitching. Okay, so on their bodies, you find various uh, rifles, uh, human-style rifles. Looks like they ripped off the local technology from this planet themselves. They repurposed it, made it orcish, spikes and various teeth on it, all manner of gorgeous mess on their weapons. Um, you find, and the leader of them, it appears, appears to be leader, there's not much left, uh, he had a bag of rocks. With different colors in it. You see blue, you see green, you see yellow, you see black. Like all colors of the rainbow rocks in his pouch. Huh, that's weird. I don't see any purple or reds here, and those are the only other two colors we've seen them use. They were trying to find like those little bastards. Tell we know the black one. Did it do anything? So is the purple one the cloaking invisibility one, or was that black? I don't remember. I think it was purple. Right. purple we thought yeah. it was black. I thought the black ones didn't do anything. Yeah, the purple ones, if I recall, was the one that transforms them, transfigures them into creatures or whatever. Makes them look like they put the thing on, they wear that rock, and they look like that creature to you guys. Mm, that's the first time hearing of that. That was that, oh, that ape thing you fought beginning. You don't remember that? 
No. It was yeah. in a tree? Yeah, it was in a tree. You guys thought it was a monkey. Yeah, this, it looked this, like a monkey. That was a long time ago. That was like yeah. mission three. It looked like a yeah. monkey and it smelled like one too. Yeah, and uh, you just... Yeah, so the yellow monk's character just saw a grenade pop out of his chest, or uh, arm pop out, orc arm pop out of his chest and throw a grenade, you guys. So those... those Your guy probably wouldn't know that intel, but uh, the old crew was, so don't even worry about it. We'll rocks do that. Neil, Neil might have remembered that, but I would need to do uh, an intelligence check and then an opposed roll. Go for it, if you want to add that to your group. Alright. Purple rocks do. I mean, if you wish to transmit that information to me, I could probably recall that for you. And you probably can now remember about it. Neil will try and remember first. And then if that doesn't work, then yeah, we'll probably transmit. Yep. So I'll get a list of colored rocks. So he has purple rocks, he has green rocks, blue rocks, black rocks. Uh, so I'm guessing just for recalling something, that would be a f uh, an intelligence roll. Nope, didn't get it. Well, those are the calls he had. I'm going to Fate Point and re-roll that. Okay. Oh my god. Neil Tyson does not remember anything about any nope. colored rocks. Yep. Try as he you might. Are you going to relay the information over back to uh, Dan then? Yes. Okay. So your character recall... Whatever you're, you remember, your character is going to remember. Of the colors. Uh, uh, oh, God. Uh... Bro Brother Karnoff. I seem to recall these colored rocks that the orcs are using from somewhere. Perhaps you have a better recollection. I do I remember gonna, reds were grenades. I was gonna cop out and say, like, my character just transmits some information, but I actually don't remember <laughs> myself. Uh, I, I really don't remember what they did. You wanna, do you wanna do a uh, roll for it? Intelligence? Uh, or some way to roll. Sure, I can roll intelligence. Yeah. Do you remember any what modifier? colors you remember seeing, though, at least? Alright, any modifiers on the just roll? Uh, plus 20. Do you remember any colors that your character did see, though? Do you remember that, at least? From the year ago? Oh my that god. <laughs> I'm re- I'm fake one that. <laughs> there you go. Hey, yo. Okay. So what colors do you recognize, at least, from... I oh, wow, that's from, a five. Uh, Holy shit. So I remember... Uh, green. Black, maybe. Purple, maybe. Uh, neon purple was not there. Cyan was not there. Mm hmm but like green, black, and blue and purple, I think, is like the four colors, the first four colors, I think, were in the, in the mission. I want to see if I have notes on those rocks, too. I, I believe I did have notes on what they did. Give me one second. It would be funny if the brown rocks were just normal rocks that didn't do anything. <laughs> those, spoilers, those aren't rocks. <laughs> <laughs> uh. I did not keep I think I have notes elsewhere, but that's fine. I vaguely remember some of these as well, so, but that's the fun of orcs. Thanks, so, Jane. So, Moth, you're telling me that orcs poop? So, your character remembers green rocks basically gave them, like, almost, like, active camouflage in the jungle. That's what the green rocks did. The black rocks, you're, you might remember them being either explosives or grenades or, or something else, like landmines. That's what you recall. Black rocks are being landmines. And they place these down everywhere. And the purple rocks. You're not certain. 
Oh, it's a purple, I'm not certain. The black ones are mines. Yep. Uh, yeah, I remember stuff very the, differently. The, well, the, the green and blue. Yeah, the red, I remember being grenades too. Yeah, I remember red being grenades, black did nothing, purple was stealth, and there weren't any other colors. Black was mines. Black was mines. Okay. Uh, I think at first we thought the black ones were the grenades. And they were like piled up in large piles everywhere. Mm hmm. Yeah, they're mines. All right, what about green and blue? Huh? Uh, green was the ca active camouflage in the jungle. And blue, you just encountered now. That's the communication uh, mimicking. All right. Uh... And purple and neon purple unknowns to you guys. Oh, purple is unknown. Oops, okay. Yeah, purple, neon purple, and cyan and brown would be all unknowns. There you go. That's what you get back from Karnoff. Are we going to record that in our uh, Intel sheet? Uh, it's both in the DevOps chat and in the Roll20 chat. So. All right. Sounds good. All right. So from here on out, what are you guys going to be doing? You've, you've dealt with the little squadron looking for y'all. And the night passes because you could just dealt with the Gretchens. You guys just are... Are you guys staying at the camp or are you moving elsewhere? Let's move elsewhere because orcs will know this encampment. So, so let's be somewhere else where where we know that uh, they may not be around those areas. Okay. Uh... Top of that, did we um, get our supplies or the the thunder thunderbirds? That's that's called in when you at your guys' discretion. You guys have not called them in. You have you have a seven day period. You can call them any time during that seven-day period once. I imagine we would have called in the uh, repair supplies for Cobweb. Now or at the end of the... Yeah. You can call them in now or at the end of the seven days. Make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would say let's do it now, because then I'll have more time to repair, right? Yeah. So you're going Is to the try... Whirlwind support battery uh, portable? It's a tank. Yes. Yeah, it's okay. a tank. It's on a Rhino chassis. Uh, so are you guys going to stay at the camp and drop these dropships down to the area, or are you guys going to move somewhere else and then drop the dropships? Let's move somewhere else, then drop them. Okay. You're going to you're gonna travel a day, half a day, what? How fast can you guys move again? However far away we need to get from the camp that they don't try and take pot shots at it as it's landing. Which direction are you guys going to be going in? Away so from the camp? Southwest. To yeah, be southwest. fair, we dropped in over here and did this yep. in about a day. <laughs> With the vehicles. A bike. With we, the had, vehicle. we had cars. Uh, yeah, that's or, right. Or the True. Cars. You're on foot now. So that's what I'm saying. So this? 20? They are space marines and I can buff everybody's movement speed. Yep. Should we need to. So. Well, I guess I'll do that. Then. That should be fair. So, 20 kilometers, you guys pick the location where you guys want to set up camp.
By the way, who's your squad captain? You guys never chose that, right? You guys chose the squad captain? Who was that? The Yo Mug or It was Yo Mug. Okay. Um we we were we didn't choose. It was chosen for us. It was the uh green guy. Whatever what what was his name? Thunk. Thunk. Oh, oh. Yeah, that, yeah, that was just that was just a pat in the back type of thing, make him feel good. Yeah. Uh, but honestly, it's to make the Inquisitor feel good because he thinks he's doing a good deed. Because he's a horrible person else, uh, otherwise. So he thinks he's doing a real good deed by being nice to this, you know. That's why he likes Thunk. Damn. Yeah, that, that makes one. sense. Yeah, Karnoff would be out and about doing other stuff, so I don't think he would be a captain in the beginning at least. So it's gonna be one of you. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, I'm not a space marine, so. Uh, but yeah. So. Whoever's in charge of the group, go ahead, pick a location and drop a dot somewhere. Can you draw on the map? You can draw on the map, right? Just put a dot where your base is gonna be. And then we'll go from there. And I'm gonna do roll some rolls to see what you guys encounter along the way. I'm going to pull rank and. According to seniority, I am now in charge. Anyone oppose this? Nope. Oh. Okay, so go ahead and choose a location somewhere. Alright, I'm going to pick this right here. Seems to be a bit of a clearing in these woods, and, uh... Right there? Yeah. Should be far enough away. Uh, let's see how far it is. So is that okay? That's kilometers. Yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah you guys are good. It's in, it's in the twenty kilometer range. All right, sweet. So let me do some rolls. Brothers, we must make a break for the clearing. To be oh. fair, given ten minutes, you could probably make your own clearing. <laughs> yeah. I do have a flamethrower. Right, so you guys will have two encounters, unless you guys want to try to avoid these encounters. You may or may not survive these encounters, random encounters going to the site. Um, you guys want to try to avoid these in any way? So, did you say we may or may not survive these encounters? That's correct. <laughs> Uh, let's try and avoid the encounters. You just wiped yeah. out a you just wiped out a camp, so they're sending pretty much a large detachment to find you guys. So you may or may not survive this encounter. So. Damn. Okay, see. So. so You, what, you're uh, force marching? We're doing a hurrying? I mean... Oh, shit. Do Sorry, we need to hurry? Our agility bonus gets us that much movement speed per day? I mean, if you are walking through a clear terrain, yes. Uh, I, don't know, otherwise. Fact, I, I can knock off one of the encounters since you'd be going double the speed and then the, then the one encounter you have to figure out no way around it else you're going to be doing two rolls so you guys going to do the force march I mean I upped our agility bonus to double mine's at 10 According to that narrative thing, in 10 hours, I can get 140 km away. Nice. Yeah, because you guys are not doing those all in one day. You guys are just getting outside the kill zone, calling in forces. That's what's going to take the day. Setting up encampment, and then heading out, rolling out, if I recall what you guys are doing. Because you mm -hmm. have to heal, repair, all that stuff. That's going to take you the whole day. So how far can the entire group move? Well, the, the slowest. Everybody's, yeah, what's the slowest agility bonus everybody has? 
I think he's going to be your mech boy there. He's going to be the slowest guy in the, the field. You said work doubled, right? Agility? Yeah, agility bonus is double. The slowest one would be 114. <laughs> Which would be what? Maximum on the on that timetable or table? Yeah. You, you just be rolling to to eliminate one of the checks. That's all I'm saying. If you do a force march, you're running faster, forcing yourself to go to the maximum speed of your slowest guy. I was looking on the uh, the movement table posted. The narrative time movement. Yeah, yeah, yeah I get that. So, Cobra, what's your agility bonus? It should only take you guys uh, about uh, an hour, about an hour to uh, at your guys' current speed, but it depends on his, his test track speed. My agility bonus is only two on the Dreadnought. Oh. Okay, so it would be four doubled. So it's still 6 km an hour. Yeah, so, okay, so so two hours you get there, roughly, or three hours. That would be a little over three. Yeah, a little over three. So, uh, yeah, I'll knock down one of the encounters to one encounter. So, however you guys now want to the work. hurrying would double that again. Really? Yes. So we could uh, hurry, and I he could be moving like, it. I presume it's like a natural agility thing, where it's uh, being like times yeah, four. natural agility three, then he'd be at six. So that's nine k an hour. Yeah, that's still the, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you're still on top of that. that. On top of that. Tess is the only one that needs to hurry. Everyone else should still walk normally. Yeah. Honestly, we get just right on top of him. That's true. <laughs> Save your uh, stamina or whatever. Well, don't you have stamina? There's also that tank that you guys disabled. No, I'm a vehicle. That would take many hours to fix that, I imagine. You have no, no we're, we're not going to do anything with that. Okay. Just making sure you guys are fully aware of the context of what you guys have available to you before you guys make a decision is permanent. Oh. All right, so you guys are marching out. Yeah. Okay, so that one encounter, you guys got to either fight it or go around it. So you guys gonna, what are you guys gonna do? Uh, we're gonna try and go around it. It's by the sounds of it, it's uh. Not what? very safe. No. You might not survive. That's all I'm going to say. They're pretty pissed at what you guys just did. <laughs> oh. God, imagine uh, what they're going to send at us if we take out their capital. So, since you're the one carrying them, it's you going to be making... I guess the rolls, or you guys can divert time and take a little. A little what? You're cutting out. Encounters to get to the base. I'm saying you can either add more time to get to where you're going and have the chance of running into more encounters, or like, uh, be the roll for that. Let me look. Probably, um, Evasion. Okay. It'd be either concealment. See, I'm guessing it would be concealment because it's not really an evasion skill. Yeah, I see that. Well, I mean, there. Yeah, it had to be it had to be concealment. I think it's evasion. I could also uh, conceal us with smoke. But that might actually that get us away. That wouldn't work for very long. I'd give you away. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to do that. Do you have any, does your thing have any sensors that you can send things long range or no? Nope. I, the only thing I have is a uh, searchlight, but that would also give us away. Because it is nighttime now. Like you, I, so I'm imagining you guys would attack and then you know, the cover of darkness vacate the area. So We're concealment. not going to attack. We're we're using the cover of night to uh, try and get around this patrol. All right. So yeah, three concealment rolls plus plus thirty. Plus thirty. All right. Is 
because the other guys would be impossible to see on top of you. All right, I'm gonna fate point that last one with uh, rookie's fate points. Okay. This will be plus forty fate reroll. Damn it! Anyone got a fate point? Big mine. Yeah. All right. There we go. Okay, as you stay concealed, you hear in the distance a roaring, thunderous roar of tracks and metal and orcs screaming, oh, oh, oh. screaming, walk! And, uh, <laughs> and shooting the sky up, and you see a large formation of tanks just hurling down in a direction. Uh, Holy crap. Uh, by your estimate, you can hear 20, 30 tanks, something like that. Just an obscene amount. So, they're going in this direction. Yeah, there was no way we could take that on. So, it was a very massive party. That's like an entire company of tanks. Holy shit. Yeah. They were looking for somebody. Yeah. They're excited and they're looking. They're looking. Hopefully, guys, hopefully they can't look up whenever we get our yeah. thunderhooks. And you just see a couple orcs uh, uh, riding on top of the tanks with torches, <laughs> throwing them and stuff. <laughs> They're throwing rocks? No, torches. Oh. Torches. In a jungle of trees. Very, They're... very flammable wood. <laughs> Yeah, you, you see some of the trees burning, but uh, they're just stomping over. The, these tanks are just bulldozing these trees down. They all have bulldozers in the front of them, so they're just like pushing through these trees. Holy crap. Yep. And it's going to take... Here, go ahead. It's taking about an hour for them to all clear out out of sight from you guys. You see him go in the distance just a path of destruction towards the southeast. So what are you guys doing now? You guys are about... i put a dot you guys are at. How far are we away from the uh, camp? Or not the camp, the uh, clearing. Where was right there. Alright. So I'm guessing we can just Keep advancing, right? Yep. I may do some rolls. After waiting for the uh, fuckers to pass. The orc fuckers. Uh-huh. Alright. Do you guys want to do any... Uh, what is it? Fate point rolls on my GM rolls here. I just took three more as you proceed to the last leg of the stretch of the leg to get there. Uh, uh. I am out of fate points. If you're asking, then yes, I'll do one. Yeah, okay. I'll re-roll I'll re -roll the best one they got. Okay. It's pretty good. One from a 26 to something else. Alright. Okay. Uh, so you guys get to the encampment. Uh, pretty much no obstructions. You do see another, in the distance this time behind you guys, another tank posse plow through that tree line with killer cans falling close behind. God damn. And they're heading they're heading south and they're heading a little bit northeast this time. So as if they're searching a grid pattern around that encampment. So where are we right now? You guys are at the clearing. Alright. Is it daytime yet or is it still nighttime? It's still not time. It only took it only took you two hours, two three hours to get here. Yeah, three hours. All right. Three hours. So it's not the ass crack of dawn yet. Mm -mm. All right. Well, we should probably get the Thunderhawks uh, to land in here while it's still nighttime, so they have I'm some cover. I'm assuming you guys, one of you guys, have a homing beacon of some sort, or a beacon. Probably. I mean, yeah. Probably. Probably. 
I'd imagine the Dreadnought does for retrieval. That's true, he would. Okay, because I was going to say, it's going to be very interesting, spicy, spicy time. I like could... I could point my uh, searchlight up in the sky, but I think that would attract the orcs. Okay, so... We're going to assume the Dreadnought has a recovery beacon. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to do that. You guys are going to pop that. They tell you ETA. I'm going to give you ETA. When the dropships are going to arrive, ETA. ETA two hours from orbit to you guys. Uh, how long until sunrise? Hmm. Uh, you got only just th turned night, so probably a while. Yeah, you got another four hours on this planet. Yeah. Okay. Very well. We will wait your arrival with bated breath. So. I, okay, so are you guys going to be setting up a perimeter around this location? Are you guys going to be building important fortifications? Or are you just waiting for the drop Well, to... so my question is, what's the range on the whirlwind artillery? Let me look that up. I don't know off, offhand. All right. And to answer your question, Boko, yes. 25 kilometers. My, my squad is, uh, for, is uh, setting up perimeters. Because I'm thinking, if this clearing is in range of the uh, the fortress capital, like we can probably just set up shop here, defend the area while the whirlwinds uh, rain hell on them. I'm just gonna give the same range as a modern uh, uh, missile range system, so 30 kilometers. You have okay. about 30 km 30 kilometers of range. So let's see then. So Can we actually like... hit this? No, not quite. You can hit the camp. Yeah, we can hit the camp from here. Uh... They also, have enough... they, you guys have enough supplies for a couple barrages. Uh, I mean, with the transports, you should be able to do. You can do 10 barrages. 10 barrages, okay. Yep, 10 barrages. Enough missiles for 10, 10 volleys. It's only, uh, what was the loadout? I think it was two tank, two whirlwinds? Probably. Yeah. Usually about... whirlwinds are sent out in pairs. Yeah, so it's two. Yeah, it's two. Or yep. missiles. Yep. So does that mean that the two whirlwinds have, uh, Ten barrages between them, or is it ten barrages for each whirlwind? Ten barrages total. All right. That's. So if we want to use both whirlwinds, we be, have five I'll barrages. Yeah, something like that. My question is, how effective is a barrage? Yeah, your character would have to determine that. Actually, uh, rookie. Wait, Rookie huh? can uh, try and determine that because he works with uh, artillery as a All forward right. observer. So I'm guessing that would be some kind of tactics. I'm going to go with uh, tactics, just the default tactics. Isn't there like a war thing? Maybe. Yeah, common lore, war, common lore, Imperium. Yeah, but that's lore. Would it be lore or tactics? I'd imagine it would be knowledge entirely based on yeah. the thing it describes. So Imperium and War Lore would be, you know, how stuff works. Alright. Modifier on that? Uh, plus 20. Alright. Uh, you know... For certain, that whirlwind battery can, like, basically level a city block with its missile barrages. With one barrage? With one barrage, you can level a city block. You can devastate a city block with the missiles. Alright, rookie conveys that information to the rest of the team.
And how many city blocks from the fortress capital, or do we not know that yet? That's that. It's an orc fortress that was built by the orcs. You have no idea what what's there, what it looks like, okay. what kind of defenses it has. Because you also know that these missiles can be shot down by uh, you know sea whiz. Any sea whiz will shoot these missiles out of the sky. That's, yeah. That's a different. So and orcs do have some sort of sea whiz technology that. You, might be aware of. You'd have to do a Xenos check on that, but you don't know off offhand. By the way, for those of you who don't know, SeaWiz is a uh, close-in weapon system, and it's uh, essentially like a, a minigun turret that is mounted on battleships, and it will shoot down incoming missiles. Oh, okay. It's actually an acronym, CIWS. Aww. People call it SeaWiz. All forbidden lore, damn. Yeah, I'm gonna re-roll that. Uh, the land version of it is Sea Ram. Sea Ram? Okay. There we go. Do the orcs have anything? I rolled the one. Holy shit. <laughs> God yeah. damn. Critical this success. Nice. This, this is for the orcs? Yeah. So, so yeah, based, orcs on your, based on your information uh, as an Inquisitor and dealing with them in the past, I know, also have an implanted data chip on all Xenos lore that we that's have available. Too. So, yeah, you know that the orcs do have this capability and can shoot down things and have been known to also use those rocket boys to jump on these things and take them over. So oh. It is possible. We don't, you don't know. It's based off the tribe you're facing of orcs and what their capabilities are. So, it depends. It's the best you know. It depends on what your on what tribe of orcs you're fighting, what variant, and how they deal with things. So you can know I pull up pictures of common defenses of these things from the? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Of these defenses. Yeah, yeah. you see uh, ramshackle machine gun turrets. You see like looks like a a giant plywood thing with a bunch of guns on it facing the direction that you've seen that uh you've seen other missiles and you show them the the rocket boys jumping on these things and taking them over like riding like cowboys you've seen seen that those are the things you've seen those variations these ones you don't know there's not much intel on, this, on these orcs other than the greco gore fist has those devious rocks So this tribe probably throws rocks on stuff and it takes them over and does it like the rocket boys. Yeah, it's Maybe that's what the neon purple rocks are for. Okay. Uh, so from here, what are you guys going to be doing? Uh, well, I'm going to wait for the dropships to arrive so I can get my repairs in. Yeah, the drops are I am sitting All on right. top Actually, of the Dreadnought's head in Overwatch. Yeah, hold up one nice. second. Let's, scouting parties. Roll, though. Let's see how well they arrive. See if they brought any friends. Ooh. Yeah, they arrive. They arrive just fine. All right. Um, I am fortifying the positions in creating a perimeter so that they, uh, so that in case they did find us, we have some good cover. Are you building barricades and whatnot? Sure. Uh, I guess do sur survival. That probably be the best one to use survival because you're just using the elements of the trees and other things to set up perimeter. Yeah. Uh, I guess you can survive modifier or plus plus thirty. That's the only thing I can think of that'd be useful in that situation is survival elements. Okay. So yeah, you're I mean, able. You could to also up. do tactics, maybe. You can do tactics too. That's that's another one as they come in. But Position. This is, just, this is setting up the little wood fortress that he's. They're knocking down trees, putting down. What what are you doing exactly? So you're doing trees and traps. You said. No. Uh, yes, we're barricading and covers. Sticks. Barricades <laughs> and covers. Okay. So yeah, you're able you're able to cobble that together. So you guys will at, at the start of any engagement, if they do engage this location, you'll have cover and fortification. A uh, you guys have a, there's also the clearing. You see the dropships come in and unload their their payloads. And you see a 
very shuffled guardsmen greet you. Oi! Came has arrived, Sire. And he's saluting the, I guess, the Dreadnought, who's the team lead, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, salute the Dreadnought. Oi, we came as, as ordered, Sire. We brought your supplies. And there's another of the Space Boys, or Space Marines, on board. You wish to speak to him? Sorry, what was that? Sorry, wait a second. Probably want to do scrutiny or something to see if this is real or not. Go for it. Is it scrutiny? Yeah. Modifier? Plus 20. Alright, Velo passes. Slip of the tongue. You don't see anything devious there. Yeah. He's probably referring to him as he would a comrade. Damn. It's, it's a coincidence that's very similar to what those Gretchen said. Now, that's heresy. Diger, <laughs> heresy. You see that? Oh my God! It's Did a Gretchen. Heresy. That's what you see. Oh my <laughs> God! It's a Gretchen. Someone would need to convince me. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, he's blowing this uh, guy away. I guess. All right. Um, I could go either way. I'm at a z I hit a zero. Technically, that's a success, but I'm like. Mm. I'm going to uh, try and carouse uh, DJ Casserere. Yep. So you guys gotta go know I gotta leave in about 40 minutes. Is that why? 40 right. minutes. <laughs> you see, uh, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. Hmm. I failed <laughs> uh. the uh, carouse. <laughs> hey, what else can I convince this poor guy? This poor, poor, poor Imperial Guardsman is about to eat it. And, and I'm Dan, busy on Overwatch. And Dan, you're coming off the you're all coming off the ship seeing this encounter. I was about to uh, like uh, play this out. Yes, once. Yeah. I love how I have you guys on edge all the time. Is this real? <laughs> Is it real? Oh God! Just like uh, fucking Ancius. <laughs> blowing his own brains out. That was great. Uh, I think that was uh, the best, best ever. I loved it. <laughs> I like how you just said, are you sure you want to kill your character? And he was like, yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, man. I know. At first... He's like, I'm going to shoot myself in the head. And Moga's like, okay, well, I, I, the bullet doesn't go through your helmet and kind of misses. He's like, no, no, no. I'm trying to kill myself. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. Your comms is damaged? Oh, so dude, I guess he's talking to you. So mm. I just can't really speak at the moment, but I, I can't hear you. Okay. Gotcha. Well, he sounds like a Gretchen. We we have uh, a couple of Gretchens trying to talk to us <laughs> through our comms. <laughs> because of, it sounds very close to that. By the way, did you guys yeah. heat the rocks for inspection? Did you guys just leave it by the body? I forgot to ask. I think I'm we leave it. I guessing we would have kept them. No, I think we left them because... Probably would have left the blue ones. Since we know their communications. And we can't use them.
I'm going to say uh, Rookie would have uh, taken all of them for analysis. You know what? They were tracking the bikes, and the bikes had stuff on them, didn't it? Hmm. Yeah. yeah. They're tracking you through orbital assets. Karnoff, this character, has dealt with that orbital asset. Gotcha. That orbital asset is no longer an issue. Yeah, so I would have taken them back to be uh, thoroughly studied. Alright, so now you have three dropships available to you at your disposal. How do you wish to approach this uh, fortress? You I guys think you mean FERP? Capital? The capital or the FERP the, the capital is where your intel is pointing where the Burger Gorf is at currently. Yep. And you just got intel from the space captain that materi spa material and vessels are coming to and from that spaceport on the ground to the war part. So this is all the information you're getting. So you proceed to attack any target you wish at your guys' discretion. Okay, so question for Boko here. Yeah. We had that big time cannon on the ship. Is that still on? Time cannon? You know, the thing that super accelerated in things time by like a million it, years in a second? I, I believe it is, yeah. But the, there, you're denied the orbital space around there, so you could... Yeah, D that was... My thing was, you could while we're the attacking the fortress, we have my ship fire at the battle barge. It was a very small cone, if you remember. It was a 1D10 meter area so it wasn't like a massive area you could poke holes in things at the time thing we could uh yeah. put that on the dam we could Deterate use that the dam. I remember being km but sure we or could KM. use that to uh rapidly uh age um or km yeah km one dt yeah sorry km i meant sorry which would be uh crazy firing at the ground but we don't want to do that yeah, we could uh, we could rapidly age Rucka Gorfist until he uh, turns into dust. Well, it's been a hundred years and he's fine, so Actually, that that's a might bad not idea. work so well. Is it a bad works, idea? Uh, works usually uh, get stronger the older they are. Oh, uh, that's the kind of thing. That's I don't want to fight a million-year-old orc. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Damn. All right. We don't know how old he was before the hundred year gap passed, so Well now we know it's gonna be a million if we do use it. Yeah. Which might be a bad idea then. I was thinking yeah. of deteriorating the the, the battle fortress. Barge. Oh, the fortress, that could work too. To deteriorate the dam. But they might just repair the dam as much as they can. You might in that make, time. You might make also a bunch of super orcs, cracked out yeah. orcs. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> or use some whirlwind missiles to destroy the dam, if that's possible. Your intel says yes. But I'm not sure if that's going to destroy the capital or the spaceport. Don't know how big the dam is. Mm -hmm. It doesn't look like that river goes to the capital much at all. There's but it could it's... flood the capital. And that could deal a lot of damage. And I mean, through that chaos. Big. It's it's about five miles from the bank of the river to the capital. It's a three to five. If it's a super dam, it'll still hit it. <laughs> There's not a lot of water behind it though. Plus we don't know if this river's a canyon, we don't know if these are like cliffs here. Well, the map should tell us uh, t tell us that. You just have a baseline information. You'd have to send scouts to figure out what the actual lay of the land is. Oh, we don't know the geograph. We don't have the the map doesn't show. Yeah, the we geograph. have. There are support drones. We can yeah. send those out. Yeah, you don't know for certain. You have some outdated topographical maps, but a lot can change in a hundred years. Now, most of that is rocky, cliffy areas along the bank line, with some 
some flat air flat spots. Then, then even even doing a scout's not a good idea. <clears throat> it's not worth it. We should save those for our artillery targeting. Mm-hmm. Was the weak question? Did all three Thunderhawks come down, or only one? No, all three came down. The the, the window, okay. it, the window was to basically he shot he, <laughs> scoot and shoot right. So okay. because we have another dreadnought in our midst, and we have a squad of space marines. Am I fully repaired now, or? It's gonna take you. It's gonna take you one one D. Let's see. Oh. Three days. Take you two days to get fully repaired. The All amount right. of damage you do, you. and the I'm tech is going at it. So you guys are gonna stick around for two days. So the first night, first day, we're gonna do roll some roll. And roll. Um, the whirlwind missile batteries are mobile. So I, how do you guys feel about setting up a minefield between us and the camp? Um, Which camp? The camp we destroyed. Us and the capital, I should say. So I mean, somewhere we, right how, now. Does, how, how does laying mine works? How does laying down mine work? Is yeah, it place some mines? How is many mines? How big's the minefield? Or even how do we deploy the mines? Is it missile uh, various? Is it annually deploying it? Is it? Let me see what you guys have. Driving through an area and just deploying the mines. Do they come mine. with like a mine layer? So you guys have. So, looking at your supplies of mines, you have enough to secure your immediate perimeter with mines. So, you have enough to make a, about a 10 meter wide minefield around your entire perimeter where you're at. Um, uh, like, what, what's the deployment like? How do we deploy the net mines? You just say that you just have your. Manually? Deploy. Yeah, the men would manually deploy Manual. where you can deploy them. So, there's literally put a mine down, that's it. We could set up mines on the main road. <clears throat> and so when we do attack the capital, the FERP Trust is going to try to send reinforcements, hit the minefield. And that'll delay okay. them. That's, that's going to delay them significantly. We'd have to do that a bit later, though, like when we're ready to move out. Mm hmm. Yeah, I don't. For defenses during those two days while we wait. I don't think it's advantageous to uh, deploy the mines just yet because we need to get closer to the fortress capital in order to, in order for it to be in range of the uh, whirlwinds. So we would almost need to be, like, next to the camp that we destroyed uh, in order to hit the fortress capital. Might also want to send a drone to the <clears throat> any enemy encampment to see what it's like over there. <sighs> Get some uh, intel. By the, yeah, by the way, you guys have about six tarantula turrets as well. Oh, dang. Yeah. All right. Are they okay. all just gun variants then? The bolters. Yeah, all heavy bolters. Uh, you guys can, you guys can drop them from the dropships as well. That's the Thunderhawks. They can just Earth. hot deploy them. Wait, can't we hot deploy the mines then? Have the uh, Thunderhawk deploy? Are you asking them, the the crew members? Yeah. And uh, they come back to you. They look at you and like, I never thought of that. They're gonna think on it. You know what kind of mines they the uh, do you know what kind of mines they are? I about reckon I can't do it, he tells you.
All right. Well, so much for that idea. Maybe re-roll it. <laughs> you know, fate point. I mean, this is going to be a prep session, essentially, right? <clears throat> yeah, I got enough fate points. I'll spend one to re-roll that. It's a plus ten bonus. Hmm. He goes. I, I reckon we could just toss it out the side, and it should stick. But I don't really know. It it should work. I, I I'll make it work. I'll make it work. I'll make anything Hold work. Hold up. That's an idiot guardman. Oh no. <laughs> an idiot guardsman with a barely passing intelligence roll. <laughs> yeah, I'll make it work. Don't worry. Don't you worry. Hey man, did you see the shit right brain. next pole? Lift is pretty high for guardsman. Holy shit. This is the this is the the crew captain. Of the th one of the Thunderhawks, Thunderhawk Three, the one that's he's, he's, the not the oh, he's an idiot officer, man. Gotcha. Yeah. So, you <laughs> see, he's 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 a you see him as a major. This is Frank. It's like, so I'll he's a major idiot guardsman. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> major, major idiot. <laughs> major idiot. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'll see what I could do. I'll see the boys uh, together, and we'll, we'll see what we could do for you, sire. Anything else you need, you let me know. It reminds me of a major asshole. <laughs> <laughs> major malfunction. And then he walks away after your inquiry and gives you all the proper salutes. Hmm. I mean, that can turn our thunder, cargo Thunderhawks into a weapon. Well, at least one of them. The other mm -hmm. one would be deploying turrets. The other two? I mean, just one of those Thunderhawks carried down a Dreadnought, so... <laughs> it should be fine with just one. <laughs> Alright. How long will the turret last? Like, what's the ammo capacity on those? Huh? Uh, let's see. A few minutes. You should be fine. So I can hold down a place for a few minutes. If you're asking the actual specs. Yeah. Yeah. It's ammo drum or two. So you have a few minutes of firepower in that area, any given area. It won't just waste them, but so it's not indefinite. So your guy. Yeah. So that's about it. What you would carry on your heavy bolter. And two of them, plus an extra mag. So 400 rounds, I think. I think you carry 200, right? I think, I, yeah. Yeah, so 400 rounds on, on each bolter. So, yeah, so 800 rounds per turret. That would be good for assaults, though. Assaults and defense. Or heavy defense, really. While we're busy assassinating Grucka, we drop to the front entrance to whatever building we're in. Mm -hmm. They'll keep any reinforcements out. Yeah, about ten minutes. Grucka, so, Grucka, Ali. So it's probably making your. You're probably just going to be making your battle plans for the next session. So. Yeah. Just trying to. Uh, okay, what's the scout drones like then? I'm just th really thinking what their true capabilities are. You can like, send them out. How wow. many of them do we have? That's a better question. You have about fifty of these things. They're tiny little drones. Fifty. Yeah, they're tiny little drones. Okay, we'll save ten for the uh, whirlwind, and the other forty we can use just scouting. Right. So all all it is is you ask what you want to scout out. I'll roll against it, see if it survives its little thing, and it sends back the information. And I'll tell you what's there. That's that's all it is. It's just, so. Uh, well, I mean, immediately we should probably scout out the the capital, the spaceport, and the fortress. Yep. Fortress. And they have about a 100 kilometer range from your location. So that's the max range on them before they lose signal. Well, well that's in range, range for any operations then. Mm -hmm. Is that operational range or is that max range? Uh, maximum range. Okay. So, so, like, they could go that 68, they tell you information, and then you'd lose it. Lose the drone. 
So makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yep. So truly, the they can. Uh, are they like how? If if they went to their maximum operation uh, and come back, do they need to recharge, mm-hmm. or are they disposable? They you can recharge them. Okay. Takes about a day to recharge them with your current flies. But yeah, about a day to. Oh, recharge then, one. then we're gonna, we're gonna we're gonna have to treat them as disposable though. <clears throat> I mean, not necessarily. We are gonna be here for two days sitting. Yeah. Okay, so we can do scouts now and then let yep. them recharge. But yep. during the assault phase, that's going to be within a day. That, that's, that's why when we make specifically, we set aside a few specifically for the whirlwind turrets only, and we never touch them until we need to use them. Yep. Yeah, too. Okay, so where are you sending these drones? I'm guessing we're say... sending them... I say 10 to the capital, 10 to Duff Fortress, and 10 to the port. The Fortress. Um, and, you just want to kill my hands, don't you? I want to, so. And on top of that, um, they're going to go in a way that they don't go, they're not going to go straight towards them. Her, I'm they're going to they'll take a round of route each. I'll do 10 rolls now. Which which cap which one are you doing first? Okay, let's let's do the spaceport first. So yeah, that's those are the furthest one. Those are permagon, but uh, yeah. So, one, two, three, four. Going around, maybe eight, like this, over the water. Seven, eight, nine, and ten. Well, they're 100 kilometers, so. So, two of them did basically fall down and ditch in the ocean. They're just gone. So, you lose two in the ocean. One of them explodes by some kind of anti air fire. And then the other ones. Let's see. One, two, three, four. So four give you intel, the rest are shot down. You said shot down. That means their air defense has been exposed. Where are they? So you're asking that, so the four, four scouts, they see that there is, looks like there's AA batteries all lined around the spaceport. And you see orcs with telescopes constantly scanning the horizon and up and down is what you see and what looks like shot down your drone because they, they get the intel back what looks like shot your drone seems to be giant flak battery things and also a chicken where where <laughs> where, 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 where were they shot down were they were they holding it firing the eggs out of the chicken or <laughs> was it a full kazooie moment you just, one of the drones were like, they kind of hovers over and sees what happened. It looks like there's an. You cut out. Yeah. Yeah. Shoving him in a tube and blasting it. You, you got caught out. And it looks like that the orc, there's a single orc, only one of them. Seems to see his hair is all crazy, tooth snaggled, and he's loading chickens into a tube and then uh, blasting him out of the tube. What the Seeker fuck? chickens, damn. Where where did the drone shot uh, get exploded? Over over the spaceport. As they got within the, the confines of the city. Okay, so Yeah, they made it super they, short they, range. They, they they made it to the city. They got blasted probably within five kilometers of the city. Within within their little sight distance, because they're these are very small targets, but the orcs did spot them. And blast them out of the sky with the chickens and the hail of gunfire and missiles. I would say that the fortress capital will have a 10 kilometer AA range then. Deducing from the space ro- spaceport. <clears throat> yeah, orcs are not going to have long range weapons. So. All right. What's the next 10? Fortress Capital. Hey, we're saving some for I the. Think, I think we can uh, yeah. we can uh, do short range, or they can come back, and that's going to be around fifty kilometers. Okay, so shot down, shot down. So three shot down already, five shot down, six shot down, seven, 
eight shot down, one got through, shot down, so two got through. The rest were shot down. Where were they shot down? Uh, the drones, they, they gave telemetry, they were shot down, like, pretty close to... So, they were... Let me get the little measures. measure mistake. Boop. Or, uh, cone, actually, be, would suffice. So, they were shot down in this quadrant here. About, about 15 clicks out. Ba basically, seems like there's... Well, that also explodes their air defense. So, are all of them from the capital? Yeah, all of it came from the capital. So, just you saw a hail of flak batteries, long range flak batteries. It looks like they repurposed a lot of Imperial weaponry. Uh, so, the drones, they scout out multiple air defenses. Looks like they've salvaged from the uh, hive cities, like their skyscrapers and other things, and made a mock up a medieval castle on a on a giant hill and they took all it looks like they took a bunch of the gold on the planet planet as well because there's a huge mountain of gold and then a huge mountain of rocks next to it and it seems that there's a centralized structure that do you want the drone to proceed forward gotta make some checks against that it's the inner court of the fortress i'm just Putting in notes of, uh, just putting in notes of their air defense. Yeah, you def flak batteries on every angle of it's literally like a uh, circle castle type of structure. It has three walls of defenses. You see the drone spots multiple gun emplacements, forks, ogres, killer cans. I repurposed Titan. Um... Has like has fangs on it and everything. It's a repurposed Titan. Yeah, flak batteries, those can shoot down whirlwind missiles. Say again? I'm pretty sure flak batteries can shoot down whirlwind missiles. I'd imagine so. We'd have to, like... I'm just thinking we'd have to overwhelm their defenses by firing firing off like basically the entire volley so that way some of them will get through but yeah there's yeah three concentric circles and a centralized structure so do you want the drone to proceed forward it's got to do some checks against that but are the two drones that survived to proceed forward they'll probably not make it back out so we may as well get as much until as we can yeah Okay, so you're just writing off the the twenty first twenty. Yeah. Okay, so minus twenty, you're forty drones. So. Both were shot down. No new intel gain. It was no. a very slim chance. It was like a five percent chance. They rolled twenty six and ninety eight. Well, that gave us a lot of intel already. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they were immediately that that what they were shot down looked like laser beams, like coming from the oh. side structure. Just, just zap, zap, gone. That's the last intel you well, got. Air support. Freaking so, laser beams. Yeah. It's like so what? essentially, it's like laser beams attached to their heads, man. <laughs> so essentially, whirlwind and air supports are pretty much negated. Uh, maybe. I mean, well, for we did saturate with eight drones. We did saturate their defense a little bit. Yeah, but uh, a whirlwind volley, like that's something like ten missiles per volley per whirlwind. So if we fired multiple volleys in, uh, I mean, isn't the entire point of a whirlwind missile battery to get around anti-air defenses? Um, not when, not when the target locations as full of air defense. We could, we could do a time on target attack where we take the whirlwinds, and we carefully calculate the trajectory of each rocket so that, despite um, like launching, 
all of the barrage of, say, all land at the same time, or roughly the same time. That would be enough to overwhelm their defenses and get through. Or in multiple angles. Yeah, I was already thinking we have each one of those tanks in a separate location. That way they can fire everything off and then leave. What's the max range on the missiles? 25 kilometers. Or 30 kilometers. 30, Sorry. yeah. Yeah, they're at, they, yeah, the tanks will have to be far apart in order for this to work. I'm still thinking we, uh, well... I mean, even if we launch it all from the same direction, like, we can still overwhelm their defenses. I think. Actually, can I do a, uh, tactics roll? Yep. To see if we can overwhelm this. Minus 60? But yes. Alright, let's see. Minus 60. Well, well two, two drones got in, which means they already got saturated. Anyone got a fate point? Oh, I've yeah, got one. Alright, I'll take Dan's. Minus 50. Yeah. You can spare mine again. Alright, we're going to wrap it up soon. I got like six minutes. Okay. Nope. I don't think this is fucking happening. Um, uh, that was a 64. You need to have below 30. Yeah. Ooh, here's a question. Are the missiles incendiary? The ones you got? Yeah. I think they're just high explosive, right? Hold up, are you, who are you asking the crew chief? Yeah. yeah. Okay, let me go look at your loadout, which one that was on. Oh, there it is. Oh, it's on number three as well. How can I help you? What kind of missiles are on those uh, whirlwind launchers there? Oh, they're all high explosive. Why do you ask? Right. I just want to know if you guys brought any uh, incendiary. Nah, no, 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 no. We won't bring that nonsense. Uh, only <laughs> high explosive explosions. They're, they're, orcs. <laughs> they're orcs. They burn real good. I guess nothing's fun as seeing things explode and go kaboom. Anything else, Watching sire? Watching them burn and crack and pop or is much better. Madam, or a, I don't know how to dress dress a female. Sir works. He salutes and walks off. Damn. <laughs> That's what he gets guard memo. <laughs> okay, he's so he's plan. getting uh, targeted. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> he's getting a surprise visit from the Inquisition later. <laughs> we'll never expect it. Uh, but it's a special military operation. No one expects no, not the, the Russian Legion, the Spanish Legion. No one expects oh. the Imperial Inquisition. Okay, so your next set of ten drones, were you sending those? I don't think we're sending them anywhere yet, are we? Because we haven't set up the whirlwinds. We're not even in range of the we're, fortress no, capital. Test, test. We're, we're scouting right now. Ah. Yeah, he said 20, so you still have 20 more to send other places. Let's get the uh, fortress. The fortress. Okay. Then after that, we'll probably wrap things up, right, Boko? So, looks like one got shot down, and the rest made it. So, this one, uh, and that one that got shot down seems to be just an orc tossing a rock up and nailing the drone. Oh my at, god. And it flew over the, over the dam. Um... So what you see at the dam, you see what looks like a crude road over the river. You see what looks like to be a repurposed nuclear power plants, I guess, from the humans and made hydrogen dams from this thing. And there's power lines, crude power lines that go down the road. And it looks like they're setting up defenses and emplacements around the dam. Uh, you see fortified structures on either side of the road, like palisade gates and other various things you see that you see a large tank formation crossing over it as well 
about 100 or so tanks. Like they're preparing for something. They're reinforcing the capital. They're also, where does the power lines go? You see, if, I'll, I'll just probably, probably be easier. Are you going to have the drones follow the power line? They should see it, see the direction. I just want to know where the direction is heading okay. towards. Try to pick a good color for that. So, and then you see it. And then you see it go this way. All right, that's heading towards the capital. Based yeah, on what we know. Two directions you see the drones. <laughs> so we can definitely send the world. So there's air defense being set up right now on the FERP Troys. And we can definitely send the world whirlwind missiles against the dam. Let the dam collapse or hit the nuclear power plant. Uh, we're in suits, so we should we should handle the radiation pretty well. Oh, fun fact! Apparently, the whirlwind missiles launchers have a special missile type that can deploy minefields. Oh. But he didn't bring any of that. He brought only high explosive. We did bring a minefield. That's true. Are you going to try to reconfigure the, the mines? Or the no, that's probably a bad idea. That's going to take a few days. We don't have a few days here. We, All right. we literally are spending two days sitting on our ass. Alright, we're going to wrap this up. So I know Bokeland's got to go. We, uh, we can yeah, go might as well. Documents. If, you, if you guys are happy with the plan, so the plan is to attack the fortress. Are we going to attack yeah. the fortress, or are we going to attack the Wait, fortress no. capital? Wait, no, the fortress, not the fortress, the fortress. The fortress right. capital. Well, uh, the capital versus the fortress. Let's just say yeah. that. And I think we can do a split attack since we have enough resources. I mean, first of all, we actually need to find where the guy actually is. Uh, and, like... The latest intel was for capital, right? Yep, that's the latest intel. That's all you guys know. You know... Lay's intel is there. That is yeah, the and the capital is big, so like we have the drones and potentially the load to scout out where the the big boss is at. Yep. Big so yeah, we'll do that good, next good, time. No, good, uh, good not, wasn't a good giveaway. Hmm? What? The big pile of gold and rocks wasn't a big giveaway. Not a big Pro enough. Yeah, I need a neon sign pointing over here, right? He's in a neon yeah, sign that would be right ideal. <laughs> Not saying he's there, but I'm just like, I, I, I thought it would be, uh, 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 yeah. I was just joshing you. <laughs> Alright. How much XP for the day? Uh, 1500. Alright. Yeah, because you killed some Gretchens and then you guys set up camp and then we're prepping for battle next. Is it 1,400? 15. 15. 15. 15. So it sounds like you guys got a battle plan. Uh, you guys going to do anything with the camp or anything like that? or He's going to scout that I think, that, I think that's going to be talk for next time. Okay. Yeah, that's I, think, I think all we really did is scouting, and we don't really have a plan just yet. <clears throat> yeah. Do you want to scout out that camp? We can do last 10 rolls. Get out of the way. Yeah. Let's get that out of the way, and whatever survives are going to be recharging. Yep. And, uh... and, and another thing, Boko, I don't think we mentioned this, but the they don't have any ammo Who? when they're they're traveling. Since they're just scouting, we just need optics, not necessarily weapons. The drones. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 that's all they are loaded with. Uh, so all but well, one got shot down on this, on this one. On the camp? How far? So it was about... So you're coming from there? So it's about 15 kilometers as well. It seems. I think we also... Did, uh, it's not, we didn't do straight, so it would be something like this. And it was a just a hail of... Just a hail of flak, it seems. Uh, and the one that got through, it sees that that camp, just like the other thing you guys encounter with the catapults, it just has an array of 
every anti-battery you can imagine set up in a semi-circle uh, just aiming outwards away from the capital. Nothing's aiming towards the capital. It's all everywhere else. Every imaginable there's about it sees hundreds of anti-aircraft things. They're just blasting the general direction where something is flying. So what's their cone degrees then? Hmm? Is it kind of like where, where's the semicircle coming? How, How big I'll, is it? I'll just draw it freehanded. So like that. Mm, okay. So it's about 20, 20 or 7 degree, 207 degree arc. So there's not, nothing's aimed at the capital. It's all aimed outwards. You know, like this? Yeah, it's like, it's like they were purposely just covering for, yeah. Like that. There you go. Alright. So now you know what that, what that camp is. Sweet. Is and that you it? Saw, yeah, you saw a couple pigs. <laughs> Kidding. <laughs> oh. Uh, Were they flying? Like the chickens? No, I was just kidding. You didn't see anything like that. Uh, but no, it looks like they took every anti-weapon imaginable in both orc and human arsenal and put it in that camp. Hundreds. Damn. And they're blasting in the general direction of wherever they think the aircraft is. So all the shots are hyper inaccurate, but it was a, gr it was a grand volume of stuff coming at it. It did not reach the FERP choice. FERP choice, interestingly enough. That's... We, uh, we went around the air defense then. No one says orcs are smart. <laughs> uh. So that camp, it's just pure air defense, or what's the ground defense look like? Zero. You see all anti-air. It it seems as though... I'll just give you the intelligence. It seems as though the other camp was covering this camp with artillery. And that the fortress is doing something in kind. That actually gives me an idea. So, if we were to move, like, maybe up here, like on this part of the coastline, we could potentially hit the fortress capital with uh, whirlwinds and avoid the AA fire of the camp entirely. I mean, but that's the entire up. point of the whirlwind being on the tanks to begin with. They're mobile yeah, they're, artillery. He, that, Tess, we probably want to shut, uh, destroy the nuclear power plants to bring the AA offline. But are we sure that the nuclear power plants are uh, doing that to the AA? Like, enabling them to be online? Do we not know? Okay. They're orcs. I'll discuss him for another Catch for another day, I imagine. They're right. orcs. Right. Good one. Good game. All right, sweet. All right. I will see you all next week. See you all next week.